NVIDIA, the company that invented the first graphics processor chip, which helped to revolutionize the gaming space and become a must-have component in the strongest PC builds, has long moved beyond just gaming. This future-focused company aims to revolutionize the cloud computing space, the professional visualization space, and push human progress forward in the drive for autonomous vehicles. The company's stock, which has long been a favorite of investors, did get ahead of itself in the past year and has pulled back significantly in 2022. The question is, should the share price decline further or is now the time to seriously consider adding this name to your portfolio? The company just reported their third quarter earnings and in this video, we will completely dissect their performance. So as you smash that like button, let me run that intro. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel and if you're new to the channel hit that red subscribe button because not enough of you guys are subscribing to the point where now I'm also shilling hot crypto garbage and so I've actually taken on a sponsorship with FTX. Get to that link in the description below. But seriously, you want to click on that link, you're not going to be disappointed. Now let's get right into the NVIDIA analysis. So you can see year to date NVIDIA is down approximately 50% and of course the shares were running up in late October and into November as I think what's really happening and you guys correct me in the comments if I'm wrong here but I think what's really happening is that the inventory glut and the consumer PC market issues are not turning out to not be as bad as people thought but you guys let me know what's causing the share price to run because it's run pretty considerably since about October now in the intro I did tell you guys that this company is extremely future focused and this is what I wanted to show you this is from one of their presentations and I always say this with Nvidia make no mistake Nvidia is a great company and they're completely future focused into the four areas that I do believe where we need innovation so first gaming continues to build out you see some of the biggest companies in the world continuing to further entrench themselves into gaming for example Microsoft is right now trying to acquire Activision and Berkshire Hathaway even started buying Activision before even knowing that Microsoft was looking to launch a bid for Activision so that tells you how many people are looking at the gaming space and for a lot of us who've been in the gaming space like I started in the gaming space around like that Atari time and like you'd go into the malls and you'd put in quarters into the arcade machines that's largely gone away except for certain malls but we all understand how much money and time especially in our youths we put into the gaming space and so it makes a lot of sense that this is big business and it's going to continue to roll out i recently just finished playing horizon zero dawn on playstation 5 i bought the playstation 5 just for the one game and so that tells you how strong the pull is into the gaming space even for people like myself who don't really game that often and then the second area where i think nvidia is going to make a lot of progress is that data center segment so as the cloud builds out as ai computing builds out you can see microsoft already talking about ai you see alpha Alphabet talk about it as well and so this is a huge area that requires a lot of manpower a lot of computing power and so we're going to continue to see this build out and I do believe Nvidia is going to be a huge driver of progress here and thus they'll be a financial beneficiary as well professional visualization this essentially is your metaverse I think AR augmented reality is the move and I've always said to you guys the most important piece of the AR and what's going to get us to make the leap is if I can put on a set of glasses I see everything around me but I just have a small sort of like tablet which acts as my computer and I just see the screens in front of me like I do not want to carry around a laptop anymore I think we're beyond that as a civilization technologically I really believe that my computer should be my cell phone and Anytime I put on the glasses, I get four or five screens in front of me and I can even just use my cell phone as the keyboard and the mouse if I need to, or I can just like point and click, but that is the direction where we need to get in this space. And so we're going to need computing power. We're going to need fast chips. And so I think Nvidia, once again, will be a driver of the revolution here and they will benefit from it. And of course, the final area, which is succeeding significantly, and you'll see that as we dive into the results, NVIDIA is pushing forward into the autonomous driving vehicle space. And I don't have to describe this in any detail. You guys already know just how much computing power is required for 
an autonomous driving vehicle. Now you can see that they've recently broken out their segments into the five different segments. So the data center, gaming, professional visualization, auto, OEM, and other. And recall the last video that I did on NVIDIA, I told you guys that I was going to break it out and forecast on these segments as opposed to their previous segments. And so I'm doing that now. So you'll see it when I show you the model, but notice that this is really a tale of two items. So the data center, the cloud segment is growing by leaps and bounds. They're up 30% year over year. And I predicted that the data center would be their largest segment. And you know, you're starting to see that now. Let's see what happens going forward. The gaming segment, I think you're having a temporary slowdown, but I think it speeds up again. They're down 51% year over year. So that 16% decline number on the total revenue line is not that important. You really got to look at it on a segment by segment basis. And so the real story is that gaming is just struggling right now because of an inventory glut, because of the fact that crypto mining is not as hot as it used to be, etc. Now let's start with that data center. Uh, and they provided us information on how the data center is performing. And, and you guys may recall one of the biggest risks with the data center, and I've talked about it on the Alibaba videos about China, is that NVIDIA or chip makers would have a problem with the US sanctions of particular chips that go to China. And it appears like sanction related impacts are being mitigated. And that speaks to the strength of the management team and the hard work that they're putting in. And what I really like is that the growth wasn't levered on one any particular industry. Notice that they're saying the year over year growth was broad based across US cloud service providers, consumer internet companies and other vertical industries. But they did of course mention that sequential growth was impacted by softness in China, but that decline was largely offset by sales of alternative products into China. And so as time goes on, I do believe that they're going to mitigate these measures as much as they can. Now, the one thing that I'm going to do in these videos as I walk you guys through the segments is I'm not going to show you all all of the segments at once. I'm going to show you one segment at a time to not information overload you guys. So we were just talking about the data segment. Notice that in 2022 it grew by 39.4 percent. Now in 2023, it's probably going to grow at 30 percent. It's growing faster than right that right now, but I was just a little bit conservative. So I grew it out at 30 percent. But of course, year to date, nine months, they're growing faster than that in 2024 and beyond. I'm only growing it by 15 percent. Now, here's the thing. I might be a little bit too conservative on my growth forecast for the data center, but I just have a hard time forecasting a 30% growth rate out in the face of an impending recession. And the point that I do want to make here that's countering that is that I might actually end up settling at around 20% because the cloud business is growing. Even in a recession, companies are going to invest and sort of move their operations onto the cloud to try and save money, at least in my opinion. And so I can't believe that Alphabet, Amazon and Microsoft's cloud segments are going to be growing at greater than 15%, but then not grow Nvidia's cloud segment at greater than 15%. So it doesn't make sense. I have to make a decision on which direction I want to go. I'm being a little bit conservative right now, but I think I'm going to have to eventually tick that up to 20%, at least for the next five years, and then bring it down to 15% thereafter. But I want to know what you guys think. How are you guys forecasting out the cloud segment over the next five years, at least, and then the next five years thereafter? Let me know if 15% is good, or are you guys thinking 20, 25? percent for the next five years and then bringing that down thereafter or how are you guys thinking about it we can all learn from each other now moving into the gaming segment recall that gaming was down 51 percent year over year that's that visual i showed you earlier and it reflects a lower sell-in to partners to help align inventory channels with current demand expectations so that's just a long way of saying that there's an inventory glut in the supply chain right now. And the news isn't good here. They believe that the recent transition in verifying Ethereum cryptocurrency transactions from proof of work to proof of stake has reduced the utility of GPUs in crypto mining. So in other words, what they're telling you is expect continued weak comps. Now, if you guys know something that I don't about the gaming space and why we shouldn't expect weak comps, let me know in the comments. Now, here's the visualization of the gaming segment. So recall that it grew by 46.3% in 2022. I think a 25% decline year over year is reasonable. The year to date decline has been 20%, but we could see further weakness in the face of a slowing consumer market with remaining inventory glut overhanging. But I think there's a lot of people who are saying that it's kind of going away. And what I like to do in this situation 
situation where I'm just a little bit unsure is I like to do a read through into other companies results. One company that would be a good read through here is Corsair because they build these products and Corsair in their recent quarterly release did say that they're starting to see improved economics in the build space as these new products put out by Nvidia and AMD are causing consumers to build out better devices or as they haven't been able to build those out over the last two years. So that tells me that the slowdown might be lower than 25% year over year. And into the future years, I'm forecasting it at 0%, as you can see here, 5% in 2026, and then 10% in 2027 thereafter. So I might be very pessimistic on my growth expectations here. You guys let me know what you think. So right away, you can tell that there are two largest segments I am admittedly probably a little bit too pessimistic, both on data center and gaming, but I'm just sort of building it out as I see it. Let me know what you guys think. Now, the remaining segments aren't that material to the operation, so I'll just cover them quickly. So professional visualization, they're seeing a lower sell into partners to help align channel inventory levels with current demand expectations. So once again, there seems to be an inventory glut in the professional visualization space. With automotive, it's growing significantly. They're up 86% year over year. Now I did say in that previous video that I do believe automotive will be their largest segment, if not the second largest segment. And so, you know, 86% growth year over year is in line with that expectation. And I expect this to continue as time goes on. OEM and other revenues was down 69% from a year ago and down 48% sequentially. And essentially, it's just lower demand. That's all that is. So you can see these three segments. For fiscal year 2023, I'm forecasting these segments at their nine month year to date growth rate and making a conservative estimate going forward. So for professional visualization, I'm basically doing slow growth into 2027 and then growing it out at 10% a year thereafter. That might actually be a little bit high on its own, but we'll see how this plays out. I think as meta pushes forward into the metaverse, professional visualization improves as well. With the auto segment, I'm growing at around 10% a year into the future. That might be very slow considering that the nine month growth rate is around 38.1%. I probably should grow this out faster. Maybe, you know, I'll do it at 15% on second thought. We'll see how I sort of think about that. I'll allow their annual report to sort of guide me on how I want to do this. Now with the OEM segment, I'm just kind of growing it at 0% uh, into the future. I just don't know how to think about it. Now, what is their outlook as it relates to the fourth quarter? Well, they're telling us that revenue is expected to be 6 billion plus or minus 2%. So what does that mean? Well, it reflects revenue of approximately 26 billion for the year. That is flat year over year. And I'll show you that in the next couple of slides. So these are their historical growth rates. Notice that the 26.9% Notice the $26.9 billion in 2022. So this is what I'm saying. Like uh, if they earn $26 billion in 2023, they're essentially sequentially no growth on the total revenue line. But notice that they have a five-year CAGR growth rate of 31.25%. So going from a CAGR of 31.25% to a year-over-year -year zero growth rate is a huge decline, which of course explains the decline in the share price. Now, I believe if you forecast out a return to the strong historical performance my suspicion is that you may be overvaluing the company and i think a lot of people did do that now let's go into how i'm forecasting out the company now i did break out all these individual components for you so you guys see how this all builds out so once again it's not information overload for you so i just want you to focus on that bottom line that total revenue line notice that i'm forecasting a slight decline so year over year pretty much steady as she goes and then thereafter I'm not really forecasting that 30% growth rate that you saw in the past. I'm doing 8% in the next couple of years and then low double digits thereafter. So 11 to 13%. So am I being too aggressive or am I being conservative here? What are your guys' thoughts on how I'm modeling this out? I think I might be a little bit too conservative on the data center. I also think that I might be a little bit too conservative on the auto business. You guys let me know what you think. Now they're generating a lot of revenue, but what are they doing with the cash that they're generating? Well, you can see here that year to date free cash flow is approximately $2.1 billion. This is from their statement of cash flows. And the way I do that is I just do sort of like a rough free cash flow calculation. For those of you who are not familiar, I really just take the net cash provided by operating activities 
and I subtract out CapEx. That's sort of like the easy, simple, high level way to gauge free cash flow. And when you see a lot of companies report free cash flow, they will put other adjustments into there. But for a lot of us, it's hard to see what those adjustments are because sometimes it's not even in the figures that are displayed, it's embedded within the figures. And so that's why I just stick to the simple free cash flow calculation. It gets you approximately to the right area. And you can see from the cash flows from financing activities section on their cash flow, they are using that excess cash to buy back shares. They bought back approximately $9 billion of shares in this environment. And recall guys, these last nine months, the share price has been down considerably. So it's an advantageous purchase, which absolutely can be accretive if it's cheap enough. And so their repurchases reflects just over 2% of the shares outstanding. I expect continued repurchases, but the question is how much firepower do they have? Well, you can see that the cash on their balance sheet has declined from $21 billion at the beginning of this year to $13 billion right now. So that kind of reflects the cash that they've been using to buy back. And so once again, they are utilizing the excess cash on the balance sheet to buy back shares as the share price comes down. And they have the ability to at least, you know, buy back $13 billion more. Obviously, they're not going to use that full $13 billion, but you could see another $5 billion or so in the fourth quarter. And so they end the year with $13 billion of share buybacks. You can absolutely see that, especially if the share price continues to decline. Now, notice, guys, that this is not a company that commits to annual share buybacks. Notice that they haven't been buying back shares for the past few years. So this is a welcome change. So you can see in 2020, 2021 and 2022 in that red box, it's a big zero. They have not been buying back shares. Now, the one thing that I do want you guys to start considering more and more, and I'm absolutely considering it more and more, and I'm talking about it more and more on the channel is that I like to see stock based compensation as a percentage of free cash flow under 10% and in the tech space, that's rare to see. And so as you forecast out free cash flow, you really have to forecast out free cash flow net from the perspective of netting out the cash required to buy back the shares that they're issuing. Now on the PL, they deduct that anyways, but if you forecast out using cash flows, you have to deduct that out manually. And so, you know, when you see my Alibaba model and I give you that free cash flow valuation, for many, many months now, I've been showing you that free cash flow valuation net of the stock based compensation. And if you go into any one of the models that the Patreons have access to at the lower tier of that Patreon, Notice that all of those models, whenever they have a free cash flow valuation, it's free cash flow net of stock based compensation. And if you want to see one company where it makes a huge difference in the valuation, go into that tracker, look up Roku and go into Roku's cash flow section. And you'll see how much of a difference there is to the valuation when you take into account stock based compensation. Now, when it comes to the valuation, take a look at what I'm valuing Nvidia at. So I have a terminal multiple 10 years out at 15 times earnings. And I think that terminal multiple might be a little bit low. You could probably get away with throwing it at 20 times earnings. And so the shares, in my opinion, are somewhat fairly valued because using 20 times earnings, you might get, you know, like an 90% of intrinsic value uh, valuation. And so I think the shares are, in my opinion, somewhat fairly valued, if not a bit overvalued if you're going to use 15 times earnings. But recall, this valuation is using very muted growth expectations on the top line. And so take that into account. I would be interested at sub $60 per share, but I think that number will go up a little bit as I sort of reconsider my growth expectations. But in any event, I'm probably not going to be buying the shares because I want a huge margin of safety here because once again, I'm admittedly just not an expert in the chip space. Anything can happen and it's hard for me to sort of predict the direction that things are going. But I believe in cloud and I believe in gaming and I think that this is a future focused company that will be around to drive humanity forward and so that's why i really like nvidia now another company that i do believe is future focused and they will be around to drive humanity forward is alibaba and you can get to their full complete breakdown of their q3 results or q2 2023 results right here